I used to adore my job. The kids made me feel so loved and needed, and in return, I loved and adored them too. And yet, I was unable to protect them. It was a Monday I will never forget. It started out like every other morning. Most of the kids were happy to be back to be able to play with their friends. I was delighted too. I loved everything about my job. As I went about my morning, setting up the tables for breakfast, I felt it. Someone was watching me. Miss Emmy, are you okay? Oh, yes, of course, Katie. Of course, it was just one of the class's usual latecomers, little Katie, whose mom worked just across the street. Somehow, the two of them were always the last ones to arrive. Perhaps I should have told Katie to go back home that day. Her tardiness would have made a good excuse. I hugged the scrawny little girl tight to my chest. She was a bit behind the others, smaller than kids her age, but with a mind as bright as the sun. Even our janitor, Thomas, who wasn't fond of the children, doted on her. I was almost certain he liked her a bit too much, but seeing the old man smile instead of grumble as he carried out his work was a win. It was an hour or so later. I was quite excited about showing the kids the new toys we'd gotten in the backyard, so I wanted to take them out a little earlier. Still, something felt off. All right, everyone, pair up, please. You know the drill. Quiet, gentle feet. In the hall, we must stay. I ended my chant early when my eyes fell on an empty space where there should have been a child. No matter what I did, I was only counting ten little smiling faces. I felt frozen for a second, my heart beating in my throat. Where was Katie? I remembered that she'd gone to the bathroom just five minutes ago, but I'd seen her slip back out to mess with Play-Doh right after. So how come she wasn't with the others? Katie? Katie, where are you? How could I lose one of the children? Fear crept up my spine, chilling my core. She had to be in the room somewhere still, right? Katie, this really isn't the time to be playing hide and seek. You know that too, right? The children, of course, grew concerned within seconds too. I pushed the emergency button on my phone. I needed help. This has happened before and everything was fine, but my gut was telling me that wouldn't be the case this time. Before I knew it, I felt a little hand tugging at my skirt. Miss Emily, I saw Mr. Smith talk to Katie a while ago. Maybe she's with him. Little Toby Taylor was a quiet child. He was observant though, so I could trust his words. Still, Thomas wasn't allowed to take the children away from the classroom. Heck, none of the staff were. Not without my explicit permission. Safety was important, yet somehow I... Miss Emily, hi. Katie. Katie was there, standing at the door right by the main door. She was fiddling with her stuffy, her eyes on the ground. Oh, poor thing must have thought she was in trouble. Well, normally she would have been, but... Thomas behind her with an odd look on his face. His eyes had always been a bit strange, filled with an emotion I could never quite grasp. Thomas, I understand that you dote on some of the children. It's lovely, really, but taking one of them away without any permission, however, is strictly forbidden. Perhaps I was just not used to dealing with adults as much as I was with children. After all, I spent most of my time with my class and the rest, well, planning for my job. I didn't have time to hang out with my friends or family as much as earlier. Still, I felt like that wasn't an excuse to feel like a deer caught in the headlights, and yet, there I was. I saw this little lamb wander off, brought her back. He said only that and nothing else, lightly pushing Katie towards me. When she let out a yelp, I finally saw it. Thomas wasn't empty-handed. You lot are gonna do what I tell you. His voice was low, but I knew he wasn't joking. Children, we're gonna play a game of Simon Says, okay? But instead of Simon, it's... Thomas Says, right? I knew that some of them noticed what was going on. One of the little girls whose mom worked with the police, Nellie, was inching closer to the wall. Her eyes panicked. Others, however, were too far away or perhaps too innocent to understand it. Yes, yes, Thomas says, whatever. The man whom I viewed only as a cranky old guy before was suddenly a terrifying beast. He shoved Katie towards me, sneering. Katie whimpered, clinging to me with her short little arms. Thomas locked the door behind himself as he sat down. Thomas says, do not say a peep. His voice was almost playful when he chanted, but I knew better. I placed a finger in front of my lips to encourage the children. I felt as if everything was in slow motion. But why? 
The question came from Lucas, one of the few in class who struggled to follow directions. His eyes were confused, and his poor little face was already tear-stained. I said do not say a thing! Thomas's holler sent a shudder down my spine. Just what did he want, even? I took a step closer to him, ready to throw my body in front of Lucas if I needed to. You! Me? He was addressing me with a twisted look, his eyes leering. I swallowed hard. What did he want me to do? Thomas says leave the room. What? I won't repeat myself. Leave the room or you won't be able to leave ever again. I did. I had no choice. I dragged to my feet. They felt like lead. I'd never felt so scared in my life before. And yet, I was also so, so powerless. I wished I dared to stay. But I didn't. Lucas! No! I wanted desperately to run back inside. The children's screams tearing my heart apart, but I never had the chance. I will never regret any more than leaving them alone. I thought I was doing the right thing, and yet I was just saving my own skin. All I can do now is remember and pray that this never happens again. My ex-wife was a school teacher for many years, but I honestly don't know why she ever chose that profession. We never had kids together, much to the disappointment of our families. Although, I am grateful for it. She often had problems with her students. Coming home from work and ranting about how much they aggravated her was almost a daily occurrence, and every couple of years, there would be an incident that forced her to transfer to another school in a different age group. She finally settled in teaching kindergarten. It was definitely not the right place for her. She had always talked about being a professor and teaching in college, but she never scored high enough on her exams to qualify. So I can imagine she felt a great deal of self-loathing for ending up in a classroom full of five-year-olds. I know she was taking out her frustrations on her students. Within the first year of her teaching kindergarten, she received two separate complaints from parents that she had gone too far with with disciplining their kids. I heard about the following conferences extensively, but even her side of the story didn't make her look good. One boy had apparently drooled on his desk, so she put duct tape over his mouth. The other case was a girl who accidentally bumped into my wife while she was holding a cup of tea, causing some of it to spill on her blouse. As punishment, my wife had the girl stand in front of the class as she poured the rest of the entire cup of tea over the poor girl's head while it was still hot. She always expected me to take her side in everything, and I wanted to be a good husband for her, so I used to support her no matter what the school said she was doing wrong. When it came to those kindergartners, though, I had to be honest with her. I told her she was taking it way too far, past the point of being strict and, well, to the point of abuse. Of course, this made her furious, and she could be a nasty woman. My mother and father didn't raise me to hit women, but hers must have raised her to hit men, because any time she was upset with me, she would strike me and frequently scratch me with her nails, something her students were also familiar with. Oftentimes, she would throw whatever she had in her hands at me, including pieces of fine porcelain that I got for her as a gift for our wedding anniversary. She threatened to cut me with a knife on several occasions as well. Every time something like that happened, I couldn't stop thinking to myself two things. First, how in the world did I end up getting stuck with this woman? And more importantly, how did she ever end up working with children in any capacity? Regrettably, sometimes in the heat of the moment, when she was screaming in my face, I said some things like that to her, which only fanned the flames. In 2017, I threatened to leave her. It was only the first time I had threatened divorce, whereas she had done it a hundred times. The next morning, things were weird. She was quieter than usual, and despite our fight the previous night, she served me tea and breakfast. I noticed the tea was a little extra bitter, and even though I was drinking it out of porcelain, it tasted like I was drinking it out of rusty metal. My wife noticed me making a face about it, and I knew if I complained that she would have a huge fit. So, like a good husband, I sucked it up and drank it, ate my breakfast, and then got up from the table to finish getting ready for work. 
Barely a few minutes later, however, I started to not feel well. My stomach was suddenly in immense pain, and before I knew it, I was throwing everything up into the toilet. My wife knocked on the bathroom door, and for a second, I thought she was going to help me, but of course she did not. She just wanted me to know exactly what was happening to me. Next time you think about leaving me, I'll increase the dose. She dropped that bomb on me and then left for work, leaving me completely alone to go through that awful ordeal of processing the poison she gave me. Ever since then, I lived in fear of that awful woman, but despite my fear, I did everything I could to avoid her and find escapes from my life at home. I started lying about staying late at work so I could go out at night and have at least a few hours of my life away from her. Unfortunately, that only made things worse. For the next two years, as we became increasingly distant, what I did see of her slowly became more unhinged, and the complaints parents were bringing against her shed light on increasingly demented things she was doing to her young students. Eventually, the time finally came that she received her final notice from the school board. At the end of the year, she would be let go. This would be her last year of teaching. I tried to convince her that this was a good thing, that she could finally get a different job that she actually enjoyed. But in her mind, this was the end of it all. She knew she would never get another job, and she always said she would never be a housewife. A week after she got the notice, she called me at work, begging me to come visit her at school immediately. I protested that I was very busy and couldn't leave the office, but she played the divorce card and forced my hand. I left during my lunch break, hoping I could come back after dealing with my wife, but I was caught completely off guard by the reason she actually wanted to see me. When I arrived in her classroom, the students were in peril. The entire classroom was kneeled over, clutching their stomachs, vomiting uncontrollably everywhere, screaming and crying for someone to help them. It was pandemonium, and in the middle of it all was my wife, standing there and smiling at me like an evil maniac. What's going on? What did you do? Doesn't it look familiar? I don't think I needed to, but I upped the dose for them anyway. <laughs> I immediately called for help, though I was in shock. Everything after that was a blur. The police came and arrested my wife as an army of paramedics rushed in to carry the kids away. I just couldn't believe that she would actually poison them like she poisoned me. After her trial and sentencing, however, there was no point in denying the truth. My wife is a psycho. Or I should really say my ex-wife was a psycho, because one of the children did not survive which all but guaranteed that our justice system would not let her survive either. On March 27, 2019, a 40-year-old Chinese woman by the name of Wang Yun was arrested for poisoning her entire class of kindergarten students with contaminated porridge, one of whom died from multiple organ failure after battling their injuries for 10 months. The poison in question was silver nitrate, a highly corrosive and toxic carcinogen that in high concentrations can render the blood unable to carry oxygen throughout the body. During her trial, Wang Yun was described as a despicable and vicious person. Her husband also revealed that he believed she had poisoned him with the same substance just two years prior, although he was never hospitalized. Wang Yun was found guilty in 2020 by the local intermediate court and sentenced to death. Her picture was never released. In July of 2023, the Chinese authorities carried out her sentence. All right, children, take your paper and drawing equipment. Today, you'll be drawing your favorite animals. If you finish your drawing, raise your hand and present it in front of the class, okay? Chris, you know that the theme is to draw your favorite animals, right? I'm not interested in drawing some stupid animals, Miss Carol. They're boring. But you know everyone will present their drawing in front of the class, right? I don't want to go. Are you sure, Chris? Don't you want to show your favorite animal in front of the class? No, I don't want to. All right, Chris, if that's what you want, but I hope you watch your classmates' presentation, okay? 
Chris, it's time for a break. Don't you want to go play with your friends? No, that's okay, Miss Carol. I just don't really have any friends. Well, maybe if you stop drawing for a moment, you could find a friend that shares the same hobby as you. Are you going to make me stop drawing, Miss Carol, like my parents did? Oh, no, Chris. I, I mean, you can continue your drawing later after playing with your friends. I wonder what's wrong with that kid. What's wrong, Carol? Oh, no, it's just that new kid, Chris. He's been drawing these strange symbols for the class today. Okay, that is creepy. He doesn't even want to play with his classmates. You know what's creepier? I heard from some of the children's parents that his family is into black magic at home. Oh, that's horrible. I understand he's a strange kid, but they don't have to say that about his family. Do you think his parents abuse him? I don't know. I never saw a scar or any other bruises on him. Look, it's just a rumor, all right? I don't want my student to be treated differently because he's different from others, okay? I understand that as a teacher. Unfortunately, kids around his age did not think the same as we did, Carol. What's going on here? Nothing. I'm just playing with them like you said, Miss Carol. Yes, Chris, but that doesn't mean to make them cry. I'm sorry, Miss Carol, but I just wanted to show them my pets. Pets? Chris, we don't allow students to bring their pets in school. You know that. Oh, no, Miss Carol. I didn't bring them from home. I just found them in the school today. Wait, what do you mean you found them today? <laughs> hey, get back here. No, Ellie, stop. It's just a worm. He doesn't mean any harm. Are you okay, Carol? Yeah, I'm fine. Could you take care of those kids first? Yeah, sure. Well, I'll be. I know, right? Yesterday he just made those two girls cry, but now he gained more followers in a day. You think he'll be a famous influencer in the future? <laughs> By the way, I heard you're teaching in the Caterpillar room today. Yeah, the headmaster said that Collins is calling in sick and can't make it. That's funny. It looks like some of the other teachers have also been calling in sick this week. I know, right? It looks as if we have another pandemic strike. Oh, please, no more pandemic. I have just had enough of one pandemic in my life. You know, with some of the teachers calling in sick, I thought the headmaster would close the school. Yeah, when it comes to the children, he usually puts their safety first. But he told me he would not neglect their studies just because some of the teachers were sick. Well, we better take care of ourselves as well. Anyway, look out for the kids while I'm teaching in the next room, okay? All right, see you later. That's strange. Where is everyone? Good morning, Miss Carol. Chris? Thank God. I thought nobody came to school today. What are you doing out here all alone? I was looking for you, Miss Carol. We were all waiting for you in the classroom, but you didn't come. So I thought you were teaching in other classes. Oh, I'm sorry, Chris, but when I went to the classroom, I couldn't find you or the other children. Where are they now? Don't worry, Miss Carol. Everyone is coming to the school. In fact, we're all waiting for you. Huh? What do you mean? Yes, join us, Miss Carol. Let's play together. Be quiet. They don't know we're here. Ellie, thank God you're okay. What happened to them? Where is everyone? They've been locked up by the children in the basement. I can't save them alone, so I hid here. Oh God, let's, let's call the police. No, we have to save them first. It's that new kid, Chris. He's the one who's caused all of this. What? But how? I'm not sure, but I guess it has a connection to that rumor. Black magic. Oh God, we need to hurry then. What in the name of... Welcome, Miss Carol. We've been waiting for you. Ellie, what is this? Don't blame her, Miss Carol. She's just obeying my order. What do you mean? Where is everyone? What did you do to those kids? Relax, Miss Carol. They were fine. I just simply do what you've told me, making friends. Now look how many friends I've made. They also share the same hobby as me now. 
You see, drawing is not actually my hobby, Miss Carol. But these symbols, they are the real hobby. You sick little... Wait, what are you doing, kids? I sacrificed my parents and every adult I could find in this kindergarten, but it's still not enough. But now I realize that it is not the amount that matters, but the person that matters. You, Miss Carol, you are the right person to summon the great Elder God himself into this realm.